And we're back, the Brave Podcast. My name is Angelo, aka Exploring with Angelo here on YouTube. Normally, you find me out there hunting ghosts, uh, going to strange places, abandoned buildings, uh, exploring the entire world, um, or at least that's what I'd like to do, anyways. But here, we uh, bring in cool guests, have fun conversations. Sometimes we talk about crazy things. Sometimes we talk about even crazier things. Um, but before we get to our two amazing guests that we actually have here with us tonight, um, I'm going to introduce my co-host, Moshi. I am Moshi. Are you? <laughs> Are you so. sure? <laughs> on YouTube, on YouTube, my channel says Moshi. Uh, hey, welcome. And I want to remind you, you're obviously watching us wherever the hell you're watching us. If that's YouTube or I guess or we have video on Spotify. Mm -hmm. We're also on Rumble. We should at some point get on to google podcast too i just found out that is was that a thing. thing i just found out today i didn't even know that, that was a thing. thing hey find okay. us on google podcasts as soon as we're there and uh, apple Podcasts as well now tonight we have a couple guests one i've met for the first time and one that is kind of like the third member of the podcast yeah. i would say so i'm going to introduce our third member of the podcast for the third time tonight mr ethan minnie welcome back sir please introduce our new guest yes Got, uh... Just pull the mic a little bit closer. There we go. A little bit closer. <laughs> is it not on? Did we test his mic? No. Is it oh, on? no, I don't think so. Oh, maybe not. Oh, technical difficulties here in the Brave Podcast. Is it on or not? Wait. All the lights are on. That's weird. Huh? We got bonjour. There's a problem on three? That's weird. Okay. We will pause for one second. All right, so technical difficulty uh, averted. Um, we think we had an issue with the cable on Ethan's microphone. So Ethan is now hearable. We can now hear you, Ethan. The whole world can hear you. So cool. tell us, <laughs> tell yeah. us what you do. <laughs> Explain a little bit about yourself. I'm gonna beer. Oh, what I do? I uh, go in empty, large mansions and. Uh, and uh, document them for all of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Big Banks does something kind of similar. Tell See? us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, so I am Big Banks. I explore all kinds of abandoned houses, mostly houses mm -hmm. and mansions. Really like the mansions. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys like the mansions too. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's all about the mansions. Mansions are cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. dream of living in one mm -hmm. one day, but. Yeah, we'll, we'll take exploring them for now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was explaining earlier because I have my old guitar on the wall and uh, I was like, yeah, I used to play and uh, apparently do you play yourself as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been playing guitar? Just since March. Oh, you just started learning. Mm -hmm. then. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I used to play, I think I started in like end of elementary school and I'm like, yeah, that was back when I had dreams of being a big rock star. And then those <laughs> dreams are long gone. But you know what? YouTube's a close second, I'd say. <laughs> right. We'll, we'll yeah, take it. For sure. Right? <laughs> so uh, Big Banks has been uh, getting a lot of success recently on YouTube, um, as well as Ethan. Um, your channel just like blew up. Like you just came out of like absolutely nowhere. Um, and first of all, I'd like to point out one thing that Big Banks is actually the very first American on our show officially. What? So yes. congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Congrats on uh, crossing the border and uh, coming to <laughs> Canada. What do you think so far of Canada? This is your second time here, right? Yes. Well, technically third. Mm -hmm. I tried to come here yeah. one time and I tried driving here. Okay. And uh, they did not let me in. <laughs> Why? What'd what you happened? say at the border? Well, I, I, so first of all, I went through the wrong, like, like entrance? drive. Yeah, yeah, I went to the wrong entrance and I didn't have like whatever drive can can or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. It's arrive like can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Arrive can. I didn't do that. I did like yeah. no research. I was just thinking like, oh I can just drive there and yeah, yeah. show my passport and I'll yeah. be good. No. no. Yeah. They like went through my whole car. Oh yeah. Trashed my whole car. Damn. Went through my wallet, went through my text messages. Damn. And they were like, Yeah, no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. So, so technically three times, but when I flew here, it was like easy. I just walked kind of right in. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was probably during the whole uh, vaccination time of Canada back when vaccines were required. Um, yeah. So well, you had to like put all your info in the stupid app. We had to do it too as citizens. So we, we could, if we wanted to, we could have not done it. But we would have received a six thousand dollar fine even what? as a canadian citizen what? yeah dude it was it was crazy back in the day when they had the whole vaccine <laughs> thing crazy. going down and i was like fully vaccinated and i'm like yo um like 
I just didn't take a test and they gave me a $6,000 fine and then they fined me another time because I didn't receive the results in time when I was coming across the border. It was wild. Went to court both times for it and had to plead guilty with a $0 fine. So gave them the win, but I didn't owe them any money. It was just stupid. I think it was just because like when they go look, when they look back in the future, they can use it as like part of their case study. Be like, well, look at all these guilty people. Right. So, That's crazy. It's crazy, dude. man. I'm telling you. It's like Canada's beautiful um, with a little taste of communism at the end of the day. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> is what it is. But apart from that, how's your experience been so far? I actually really like Canada. Yeah. It's like really pretty here, but I, I haven't really got to go outside of like Toronto much right. yet. So hey, you haven't seen shit. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. But Toronto as far as like, much. like for what like we do, mm -hmm. as far as like exploring wise, like the mansions here are insane. Yeah. Even the ones that aren't abandoned, like just driving through the neighborhoods are just incredible. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Like yeah. really like mansions like that big. Like I've yeah. been to plenty of areas that have big mansions, but like not like Toronto. Yeah. It's crazy here. Not that big and not as many. I mm -hmm. guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ethan knows all about that because he does yeah. it on, on, literally on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, hunting more and more mansions. And it's yeah. crazy. It's like, why? Why are there so many of these mansions, right? It's right. like, well, a part of it is um, years ago, they used to allow a lot of people from other countries that didn't even live here that just had a lot of money and they would come and buy these extravagant properties um and not even just the extravagant ones they would just buy normal houses too and now it's kind of snowballed into this really big effect where they've driven up the housing prices to such high amounts that normal citizens cannot even afford a home anymore let alone a rent rent now guess how much renting a basement is here in, in canada like in my area do you know anybody have an idea a basement a basement just take a wild guess um, like two grand like Some if, if you're lucky, that's like if you know somebody and they're willing to give you a discount, it's two grand. Two grand, grand. really? Yeah. For a basement. That's gross. Yeah. That's I was terrible. talking to somebody wow. yesterday, um, and I think they're finishing. Yeah, they're about to finish renovating their basement, and they're going to be looking to rent their basement for almost three grand. Oh my God. What? Three grand for a basement? That's not even like the main level of the horse. The, the horse. The house. <laughs> you're like literally living in in darkness. You're a vampire yeah. at this yeah. point. Like you don't even exist. But. Yeah, that's the state of affairs here. In that's terrible. Yeah. What's yeah. it like? Where are you from? I'm from Oklahoma. What's it like out there? If you were to say, is there much like basement renting in there? No, I, well, actually, renting is pretty cheap. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, compared to here, it's really cheap. Um, I live in a three bedroom, two bathroom house for fourteen hundred dollars. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and that's the whole house. fourteen hundred U.S. House. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, Dang. two car well garage, backyard, privacy fence, like everything. Wow. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Then you're Oklahoma. So what's it like in Oklahoma? I gotta, I gotta know flat, what it's flat. Windy. <laughs> uh, nothing to do yeah. ever. Tornadoes? Um, there is a lot of tornadoes. Yeah. Not where I live, but like maybe like an hour away they usually happen. Mm. Like around like Moore, Oklahoma and Lawton, Oklahoma, they happen a lot. Okay. Um, but I've never, I've actually lived in Oklahoma my whole life and never seen a tornado like in person. That's good. Really? Ever. My mom says she has, but I yeah. never have. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of want to, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a cousin. He was, uh, he went to Panhandle State University and um, he played baseball. So when the team would travel, he said one day he saw three tornadoes and one after the other. Yeah. Because you're in the Panhandle. That's where uh, Tornado Valley is, mm -hmm. right? So that's where all the tornadoes are. Wow. They're claiming now that Tornado Valley is shifting, apparently. Like it's mm -hmm. kind of, there's been a lot more tornadoes recently, like in one other area. More than they're like more than they've ever noticed before. So they think that maybe like the area where most of the tornadoes occur are just kind of shifting into a different spot yeah i don't know if that's true or not they've but. been happening more in like kentucky and tennessee mm, right, right lately yeah which is a little bit i guess less predictable because they mm -hmm. do usually don't get them as often right i guess yeah. it's more like oklahoma yeah oklahoma usually gets them but we we don't get that many like really big tornadoes we yeah. used to like a long time ago we had like one of the biggest tornadoes ever mm. and um but i think tennessee and kentucky have been getting really bad ones yeah i think kentucky got a really bad like tore up yeah, so yeah. much stuff yeah i remember there, there was i think there was one that like tore up like a factory or something mm -hmm. while people were still in there it was completely un well, i mean you don't really expect them they kind of just form and come out of nowhere yeah. well yeah you just got to get to any shelter but yeah you know, yeah it's but, mostly metal buildings out there in oklahoma they just 
the wind just picks yeah. them up. Yeah, just takes them away. I'm just imagining the movie Twister. That was in Oklahoma, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Actually, yeah. part of part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was a really good movie. But one day it would actually be pretty cool to do like a um, be like a tornado chaser for like mm-hmm. a week or something like that. Just mm-hmm. go and document like what they do and imagine like you're out there and like a tornado actually happens and you get to film the whole thing and be there and the experience and hopefully you don't get sucked up and go for a little trip (laughs) yeah (laughs) but uh apart from that apart from oklahoma what else is going on in your life big banks uh well exciting a lot a lot's happened like over 2023 i didn't really like get to explore a whole lot i went through a divorce like the first like half of the year Mm. um which you know when you go through that you know you get depressed and stuff so i didn't really go out and do a lot gain some weight you know and then uh I was smoking like weed like every day, like so much weed every day. (laughs) Like, and uh, I got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then I like gave up on trying to like talk to like, you know, the distractions and stuff like that. And then I got a call from my ex girlfriend, which she was my first girlfriend ever in high school. And we talked on the phone for like 20 hours straight. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And then we've kind of just been together ever since then. 20 <laughs> so, hours, damn. You know yeah. the, the commitment alone it takes to talk to somebody for 20 hours? Like, were there like, okay, you must have like hung up a couple times in between no. to go to the watch. Nothing? No. You were just on didn't, the phone? Didn't even fall asleep. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, con- just continued conversation for 20 hours. You were just, you were just sitting on the toilet. No. <laughs> I didn't even go. I was like holding it. That's amazing, man. That's cool. That's, am- <laughs> That's really cool. Good it's for crazy. you. Yeah. But then, like, we uh, like we talked again on the phone, like mm. a week later or it's a couple weeks later, for 15 hours again. Whoa. And then we met up finally, and then we've just been together ever since. Okay. And she has a son, so mm. I now have a stepson. Nice. And it's just been like it was kind of hard to adjust to that at first, so. I didn't really get to start exploring again until like late October, but then since late October, I've just been back on the grind Mm -hmm. and getting back at it. So were you still like, you were still posting though consistently? Yeah. Yeah. I was still posting. Well, I went 40 days without posting. That was like the longest I went ever. That's a pretty long time though. That's like basically taking a month and a bit off realistically. Yeah. Yeah. I went, that's the longest I've ever gone without posting. I went two like almost two and a half years mm-hmm. posting every single saturday and didn't miss a single saturday yeah and then just adjusting to everything that happened in life because everything happened like kind of all at once yeah and um it kind of just like set me back and then i had some trouble which you know about which we can talk about yeah, yeah. we'll get <laughs> and into then that, that kind of uh <laughs> that set me back a little bit too and then yeah i had some failed trips mm-hmm. where i was like i had like 20 plus locations like that I had found, but then none of them worked. Right. None of them were good. None of them were, some of them weren't abandoned anymore. Some of them were empty or they just didn't work out. Yeah. So it was just like thing after thing after thing that kept me from being able to give videos. Mm -hmm. So for 40 days, I was just like, nothing was working. Yeah. But then it kind of all just picked back up again. So yeah. Yeah, sometimes that's what you need. You need a little bit of a, a little bit of a break to kind of even restart, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind of like people don't realize like doing this, becoming a YouTuber, like it becomes obsessive, right? Like that's literally yeah. all you focus on, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're probably the same way, Ethan. Yeah, definitely. Like you're just constantly trying to find um, more new locations to film or mm-hmm. new ideas, maybe how you want to maybe change how you want to film or whatever it might be, right? Everybody sometimes needs a break, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. You want to avoid burnout. Yes. As much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So vacations are a must. Um, oh, yeah. Whatever. Everybody's got it. Like everybody's got a different version of vacation. Some people like doing, you know, beaches and, you know, Caribbean or going down to Florida or whatever. That's what I like to do. Um, but some people just like to stay home and just kind of like watch movies and just turn their brain off. Go staycation. Right? Staycation. <laughs> right. Staycation with a big steak. Just yeah. grab the barbecue and just cook a big steak and then you stay home and eat it. Steak, <laughs> steak on the staycation. Staycation. <laughs> so what would what would be your way to stay consistent? Like they a lot of time they say on YouTube, stay consistent, post mm-hmm. all the time, whatever. How do you stay consistent while still being able to take time off to do the to take the breaks? Well, what I do every time I take a trip, I try to maximize like as much as I can. So like I'm like, okay, if I have two days in Canada, like two full days of exploring Canada. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay, I need to try to get at least 
two to three videos. That's two to three weeks. That's mm-hmm. perfect. And then like, um, I'll try to plan like a couple of trips. I, I, what I want to do is when I take a week long trip, I try to get five to six or more videos. Right. Because if I have that, then I have a month or yeah, two months. That's great. Worth of videos. And then at that point, I can take two weeks and just be like, okay, I'm just going to edit these in a couple of days. And then I'll take the rest of the two weeks off and just chill. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of like helps me just get back into the, the, the want to and stuff like that. Cause I have experienced burnout before mm-hmm. and it sucks. Mm-hmm. Like I've gotten to a point where I wanted to quit, but then like, you know, you see the dollar signs <laughs> and it makes you want to go further. Plus like with YouTube, it's a whole different game as far as making money and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it really, that kind of motivates you in a way. And then, you know, you start, I start thinking about like how I wanted to make people proud and how I want to prove people wrong. Mm-hmm. So, cause I had no, like when I first started, nobody believed in me. Mm-hmm. Like my grandparents thought it was a joke. Mm-hmm. Thought, I mean, most old people don't yeah. think it's real anyways. Um, when I was married, my ex-wife said that I was going to quit mm-hmm. within like a month. And obviously it proved everybody wrong. Yeah. So I always just try to keep that same mentality through it all. Even though I've done good, I still want to keep it that way where yeah. I'm like, I know I'm still doing good, but I still want to prove people wrong. Right. So good for you, man. Looks like you have. Yeah. Still trying. <laughs> <laughs> still trying. Yeah. You're always, like I said, you're always looking for like ways to improve. And sometimes it's not even like, it's not even about the money, but sometimes it's like the challenging yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. That's kind of like the way I look at it. It's like, can I like, like right now I'm just, I've been on like a grind for a very long time. I don't stop. I upload every, pretty much almost, almost every day mm-hmm. between the main channel and vlog channel. And then now the podcast channel. So, and it's like, it's a lot of work to remain consistent doing that and always wanting to put out something that's high quality, right? Something that people will actually want to watch mm-hmm. instead of making it redu- redundant and just filming something for the sake of filming something. Yeah. Right? I think so. another good thing too is like, I was talking to Ethan about this earlier mm-hmm. is how like, even if like YouTube s- stopped, like I would still explore. Right. Because like, it's just something I love to do. Mm-hmm. The money is just a bonus. Yeah. So I, I think just keeping that passion yeah. is, is very important. Mm-hmm. you know yeah for sure like i even know with ethan like you were probably out exploring before anybody any of yeah. us anyways i've been doing yeah. this for this will be my like hardcore 11th year yeah like which, that is, I've which is crazy because you're what 22 23 i'll be 24 in april 24 okay. yeah so i was means... 13 when i started <laughs> <That's Jeez. crazy. laughs> yeah amazing <Jeez>. yeah <laughs> this, this little kid going from house to house oh I man <laughs> what's <laughs> that's amazing um so when did you start like exploring never mind youtube but when did you start like going into like abandoned places and stuff i started exploring in 2016 okay um i was just doing like local stuff like mm-hmm. pretty much my grandparents were pretty strict yeah and you grew up with your grandparents right yeah yeah, yeah. and my grandparents were pretty strict and they like wanted me to be home at a certain time mm-hmm. um but I had a door that led straight outside from my bedroom. Oh, and wow. I could just lock my bedroom door. Yeah. And my grandparents, they slept hard. So I just yeah. would leave. <laughs> and then I would go, like, take girls to, you know, aban- this mm-hmm. abandoned nursing home in my, my hometown. Just try to scare them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I found, like, a hospital in my hometown. And I just was just going just for the heck of it. Like, it was just fun seeing what was in there. And... um Then it just kind of, like, I always wanted to be a YouTuber, so I was, like, Mm -hmm. making videos of, like, dumb stuff. Yeah. But I was still exploring, but I just wasn't filming it. I just liked doing it just whenever I could. Yeah. And then one day I was just like, you know, I'm just going to film it when I go. Mm -hmm. And then it just went off from there. Yeah. So that's how kind of that started. But, yeah, ever since 2016, I've been just going pretty much after high school. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um. Were you watching other people film these places? Um, Is that kind of what motivated you or convinced you that, hey, well, if they're doing it, maybe I can do it too? uh, With YouTube, yeah. Yeah. But at first, uh, I wasn't watching anybody. I just Mm. liked to go to, I just saw these old places and it just intrigued me. But when it it came to YouTube, I was watching Exploring with Josh. Right. Which I'm pretty sure everybody... Yeah, I think everybody watched Josh at first. He was kind of like one of the real OGs. I think... 
I would say him and maybe the proper people. Yeah, I didn't really watch them. I watch them. They're they're just much slower pace, mm-hmm. right? Because they they just speak, and it's not like to insult them or anything. It's just how they do things. Yeah. Right? They're very very slow. It will literally take them an entire day to film a video. Because mm-hmm. um, I know Dave's gone with them, and he's like, yeah, they're they they because they like literally move really slowly. Because their their whole thing is very cinematic, mm-hmm. right? So it's not really like. Like me, I just have a habit of moving quick over the years now doing YouTube. I've kind of learned to kind of slow myself down because I was actually moving too fast to the point where it was making yeah. people nauseous. But Same those here. are just learning curves, right? Um, that if that you're just so excited to go in these places, you're just, yeah, look at this. Oh my God, look at that. Look, oh, look, a cupboard. Look, look, at, look, look, a cup, a chair, a this, a that, whatever, <laughs> right? And you're just trying to film everything and cram it all into a 20 minute, 30 minute video. So that's just kind of how it was. And then the proper people is just like, they speak very slowly in today's video we explore this old abandoned mall <laughs> yeah yeah but um, it's more geared to like an older yeah. crowd yeah, yeah for sure but no they're doing good congrats to them and i always really like their stuff actually kind of motivated me to go out and originally yeah. start exploring but i kind of started the same way i was like filming myself making tomato sauce and fixing the car right and it was just like it was stupid like looking back it was like really cringy and Mm -hmm. like the videos were horrible but everybody has to learn yeah i did some really stupid ones too what did you do what type of stuff did you make i did like this one the most dumb video i ever made was called the rainbow milk i was just looking at these (laughs) oh my god (laughs) what the hell is that the rainbow milk (laughs) challenge so you (laughs) so you pour like food coloring and a gallon of milk okay and you have to drink it with your friend and you see who can drink the most milk so you have to try to down a whole gallon of milk oh crap which that makes you you it, you, you can, can't do it yeah like you, it'll come right back up no? yeah you throw up yeah so like the whole video the point of it was just <laughs> to throw up <laughs> pretty much oh, so, <laughs> I gotta see these, it was so, man. It was so bad <laughs> that's crazy how, how far back do i have to go on your channel it's too? really it's, it's it's the very end yes the very click end? on click on Latest? oldest oldest oh, yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, I get to oh, see God. some. I also, see I that. see Dude. taste testing Jack. This is so bad. <laughs> this? Exploring Haunted Cemetery, Bird Box Challenge. What the heck is the Bird Box? Bird yeah, Box is a Dude, Netflix it's movie. so stupid. This is <laughs> I can't even watch these, dude. <laughs> Try not to laugh. Isn't it fun Tell looking it. at your old stuff, being like, "What was I doing?" These are cringy, dude. This is so a day cringy. in the life of Big Banks. I was on Netflix. I was. Oh, yeah, I was on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah? I actually was. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, it was okay. I had no idea I was on Netflix until like a few years ago. Uh, oh, so, really? so there's this movie called Jesus Town USA. So it, it was 2013. I was in a play, involuntarily. I, I did not want to be in this play, mm-hmm. but since I went to church with my grandparents, they put me in this play. It's at this uh, little thing and they built in the mountains in Oklahoma mm-hmm. that's supposed to represent like the holy city. Yeah. You know, so every year they do a play for, it's called the Easter pageant, which is like a whole play of Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And I had to be in the play. So I didn't know that they were filming. But the guy that was playing Jesus was apparently not a Christian, but he knew like every single word of the Bible and knew like every single word of this yeah. whole play without even reading a script. And they were doing a whole documentary on this guy. Hmm. And I, I'm just in like little bits and pieces of it. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, how did I? <laughs> how did how, this happen? <laughs> how did I end up in that? Where were the cameras at? Yeah. I didn't even see the cameras. That's so funny. Yeah. Wow. What was the movie? called what what was the movie called jesus town usa jesus town usa and it's just following this one guy in a play yeah that's a really and so you were on stage and he was filming it no like we we, it was just like a documentary like in the mountains like showing him and his life and like why because he's like a buddhist okay but Uh. he's playing jesus oh wow yeah, it's kind of strange. It sounds like it. I'm, I'm like, how do people get documentary roles like that for Netflix? I don't even know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, why would anybody want to watch? Like, was it like that great of a play? Or? It was not good. No, no, no. Like, absolutely not. This is weird. Like, who? At, okay, I'm. But like, who at Netflix thought like this is the one? Yeah, right. Seriously. Like, like I imagine who greenlights that. Like in. Like, you know, the people go to the office and they come and they have this big board meeting and they have to go through like 15, 20 different ideas. And they're like, um, 
man scales you know the cn tower or something it's like nope not that one not exciting enough uh man who invented water nope not not good enough <laughs> right man who um you know drove the fastest car in the world nope not good enough man plays jesus in play is not a christian that's the one that's the one yeah. boys this is the one we're going yeah. with. i wish netflix had a, a view counter like youtube does right yeah so yeah. i could see how many people watch I bet that it was movie. low <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you find out you were in it uh well so the what is it the youth leader uh at, at the church at the time he like messaged me on facebook it was like years later and he was like hey you know you're on netflix and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> like oh wow maybe one of my one of my youtube videos made it right. on there it's like no no so I went, no i went and watched it and i was like what is this <laughs> And I'm like, uh, how did they find this guy? Like, did he like apply? Because like, it shows him in his apartment, and it's like a little one bedroom apartment. Yeah. that's like completely trash because he doesn't clean up after himself. He works at Whataburger. And I'm like, how did they get this guy a documentary? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's I don't so weird. Like, that's what an odd <laughs> set of circumstances. <laughs> I don't understand. Um. <laughs> so funny um so i guess we'll uh backtrack a little bit so when we met when did we meet 2021 i think it was 2021 yeah yeah it was the, like july yeah um so we met in uh, i remember i was on the road with steve ronan i had just done a, a pretty lengthy trip with steve up from florida i was with mo um we traveled all over the east coast and then somehow after Mo had left, uh, Steve and I ended up in Pittsburgh and we're like, oh, I wonder if there's like a few cool places. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a, a mall, a big mall. So I guess he spoke to you. You decided to fly out to Pittsburgh for like whatever, two or three days. It was like two days, yeah. Yeah, we all rented that um, random Airbnb that was kind of like in the middle of nowhere, like that yeah. was infested with cats. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do remember. It was like this random house and there was like the crazy cat lady next door well she wasn't the crazy cat lady but she used to like take care of all the neighborhood cats and they were all strays because apparently they used to have a rat problem so you would literally come outside and there would be like 15 to 20 cats would just come out of nowhere and they were so cute too some of them they would just come and you yeah. know, like give them scritches and whatever <laughs> um so yeah you flew out um and then we ended up going to a mall, which was, I think everybody knows the mall, but at this point, Century 3 in uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up going in, filmed the whole thing. And it was really easy because somebody left the bay door open. Yeah, the bay door right? was just standing open. And we just, like, yeah. I think we even, that was like the first thing we saw. Like, we didn't even drive around the whole place. Right, yeah. Like, we just drove in the parking lot, which there yeah. were other cars in the parking lot. And we were like, right there, let's just go in. Yeah, exactly. And we went in. And we were there for like what three hours, three, something, four like hours that, yeah. or something like that. Like we literally rolled in, um, and filmed the whole thing, and then that was pretty much it. And then what? Two years later, they decided to give you a a special phone call. What happened? Yeah. So, so Steve, you know, Steve does Facebook videos too. Yeah. So he like re-uploads stuff. So we went two years ago. I posted my YouTube video over two years ago in right. August. Me too. And um. Steve had just reposted a Facebook video. Mm -hmm. I think and, it was like a reel or something, right? No, it was like one of his little like shorter videos, okay. like the five minute ones. Right, right, right. And then somehow the West <sighs> Mifflin police got a tip mm -hmm. and they could only identify me mm -mm. in the video for some reason. That's so weird. And <laughs> what's so weird is they didn't do any research at all. Like if they could just look at the video for like two minutes they would see that the mall is in perfect condition when we went versus now that's completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, oh, he went last month. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And the only way he could have got in was he broke in. Yeah. He ripped the board off. That's what they were. They were like making yeah. all these like accusations that we somehow slipped past security and ripped the board off and got in and mm -hmm. filmed the whole place. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. It literally makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But anyways, I'd, I didn't get a phone call. Somebody mm -hmm. sent me a link and it was a link for CBS news in Pittsburgh. And it was them standing. It was like the news lady standing outside the mall saying an Oklahoma man has been charged with trespassing at the century three mall. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no way. And then, so I called a lawyer and the lawyer was like, yeah, they're charging you with a felony uh, and, oh. a, and a misdemeanor. And I was like a felony Yeah. for what? And they were like, 
uh, criminal trespass, uh, basically breaking and entering. Yeah. And I was like, they have no proof of anything. This was over two years ago. Yeah. And um, then I had to pay like three grand and then two flights there because I had to go to court twice. Mm. It's three grand for the lawyer. Yeah, three grand yeah. for the lawyer. Yeah. And then each flight was $1,000. So I had to pay yeah. five grand in total yeah. to be in the courtroom for five minutes for them to say charges withdrawn. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. So it's two years apart. They're looking at this new video that seems new. So they think it's now it's happening. So what's the difference between two years ago? And now, why is so? Yeah, the mall's been trashed, but wouldn't it have been the same felony two years ago, even if it was? No, because it was it was wide open. There was no, yeah. there was not. So I didn't it's even, just the breaking and entering. I didn't yeah. even see any signs when we went. No, I don't remember seeing any signs either. Like so, the door was just open. We just yeah. walked right in, and there was no security at that time no, when you guys no, went. No but security. now there would no. have been. We parked in the we parked in the parking lot. Yeah, a like, lot of people park in the parking lot because there's a bus terminal near nearby. Mm -hmm. So they literally, and the outer stores of the mall, like, um, how do I explain what this mall was like? So you have the big interior mall. So yeah. imagine like Bramley City Center and then Bramley City Center shuts down and then you have the stores, Just like the, plazas outside. the plaza outside yeah. is still open. So that's how it was. Yeah. So people would park oftentimes in the parking lot and like walk to the bus mm -hmm. shuttle or they would go to the other stores or whatever it was that they were yeah. doing right um yeah. but the thing was that first of all you have something called statute of limitation so because it was over two years technically they can't do anything at all mm -hmm. because um and this goes for like lawsuits right so this would be a case of um, the county of West Mifflin versus big banks, mm -hmm. for example, they would have had to uh, apply that technically within two years of it happening, right? So that's why they were trying to claim that he was doing it a month before, which obviously doesn't make any sense because we had proof of when all of our videos were originally uploaded, yeah. which would be mine, Steve's, and yours, mm. yeah. right? Including photos that were uploaded well over two years ago. Yeah. So they just... The problem, the, what's happening there is because I hear about this all the time because Brent messages me all the time because he sees the local news because he lives in Pittsburgh and he's like, oh, look, more people getting caught breaking into Century 3 Mall, right? And he like tells me all the time, he's like, yeah, man, a lot of people get in big trouble and whatever, whatever. I think what they're doing is they're trying to make examples out of people yeah. and they just decided to pick on you for some reason, maybe I, thinking because you have a big following or whatever. That's exactly it what be, it was. Right? They, they yeah. used me. Yeah. Cause I have a big, cause they mentioned how many followers I have. Right. They're like, he has almost 3 million followers on mm -hmm. TikTok. So they're saying, so what they're doing is they're trying to say, Hey, we can get this big guy. We right. can get you mm -hmm. type yeah. thing. So, um, but it, it failed miserably. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, they have to follow the law too. They can't just go around suing people for no reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and the other thing too, is that, uh, break and enter as a felony would have to be classified as with intent. Right. So physically breaking in is kind of like a reason um, because you would go in with like tools. Your intent was to physically damage something in order to get inside of the building. Um, but most of the time, break and enter wouldn't even stand because it's an abandoned building and technically there's no operating businesses and no one lives there. Most of the time, it would have to be considered a dwelling, right? So I remember because I was being charged with break and enter many years ago, it was me and my friend. We went into this uh, abandoned house and everything was left behind. Uh, and then all of a sudden, we're getting phone calls that we're being charged with break and enter um into this house we had to hire a lawyer uh showed up to court and i was like are, i was even arguing with the ontario provincial police and being like yo this is not a break and enter like this is obviously an abandoned house and they're like well if you walk into a house and you take even if you just open the fridge and take an egg and put it back it's still a break and enter i'm like but no one lived there. They're like, well, they're saying that people did live there. I'm like, well, that's impossible because they had craft dinner in there from 1994, right? <laughs> they had literally stuff that had, um, what was that big store down in Toronto that people used to go to? Honest big Eds. Honest Eds. They had stuff from Honest Eds. <laughs> Honest Eds does not, it's Honest Eds is like this big famous store in Toronto. You remember Honest yeah. Eds, right? Yeah. Have you ever been? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah? What's it like? What was it like? Oh, I was, I was like 10 years old. Oh, I don't remember. Do you yeah. remember it anymore? No, I was too young. But yeah, they had stuff from there. The store didn't even exist anymore. There was a broken window with glass in the sink. I'm like, listen, lady, I don't know what you're talking about. Most people don't live in a house with broken glass sitting in the sink, right? With a board on the window. Like, you're not making much sense, right? Plus, no one lives there. So they dropped it from a break and enter down to an unlawfully in a dwelling. And then eventually, they just dropped the whole thing altogether because they yeah. realized how stupid they looked because the funniest part was that they were trying to accuse me and my friend of going on the same night but the funniest part was that if you look at our two videos it was obvious i went during the day and my friend went in the middle of the night because when he panned across the window you could see the darkness outside so it's like really are the police actually that dumb right or are they just trying to make examples out of people mm -hmm. and i think that's what it might I be i think sometimes. that's all it is mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's pretty pretty embarrassing on their end because <laughs> yeah. they couldn't get anything right but it's still stressful though that's the thing right it's very stressful. spend all this this money and time bouncing back and forth between like halfway across your your country right so yeah. um it's just a waste of time and money yeah like they, they wasted so much time oh yeah. just trying to to get me for something mm -hmm. and they wasted their money yeah to yep. their resources yeah for and because they didn't do any research mm -hmm. like they just saw a video saw a name and put it together that's all they did they they're just hoping they that go they any catch further. someone who won't won't fight it yeah that's what they pretty want. much they want yeah. someone who will roll over and pay the fee that's it yeah yeah just like speeding tickets half the time right they'll just throw around random speeding tickets that don't even make sense and yeah. hope mm -hmm. that you just don't even bother to go fight it yeah so so how long you've been on youtube now it's been a few years no um so youtube i started i think four years ago <laughs> right um the abandoned stuff three years ago mm. so yeah that that's when i that's when i started and i started doing like those dumb videos like i was saying for like really cringy stuff and then i tried to do like some ghost stuff mm -hmm. and which to me didn't really work out right and then i just got it straight into the abandoned mm -hmm. and then it's just kind of been going ever since yeah um, why did this stuff work the ghost stuff work out for you just it wasn't feeling it or wasn't really ca getting much traction for you I wasn't or, I really? just wasn't like getting any like like because I wanted to like I don't want to like fake anything right so like I wanted to get real stuff happen mm -hmm. but the only time anything real would happen was when I'm not filming oh yeah one of those yeah, yeah. of course <laughs> yeah so it's yeah, I've like, had so many instances of those but so I kind of just gave up on yeah, that and yeah. just went to the history behind places right 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 so yeah makes a lot of sense yeah i've had situations too like that um where all of a sudden you like stop recording and that's all of a sudden when you either like see something or like hear something i remember one that was like really really memorable for me was we were in uh it's not far from here it's like kind of near ottawa it's this old mill uh mill of kintail and i remember we were on the second floor and there was one more floor above us and literally it was it was mo and i it was very late mm -hmm. and we closed our camera like turned everything off all of a sudden we're like okay i think that's a wrap for that specific building and then we were going to go like move somewhere else and film somewhere in like a different section um when all of a sudden up above us we hear boom 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 boom, boom, boom. and it sounded like a like literally as if somebody was bouncing a basketball and then the basketball was like rolling away and we're both like film 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 we're like as quick as we can we had the night vision camcorders so we'd like to flip them open it takes a second for the camera to turn on then you have to hit record i think we literally caught like the last half millisecond of the sound occurring. We're like, what the hell was that? Right? We're like, of course, as soon as we stop recording, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what you end up, when you end up getting something, right? Um, so you're full time now, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been full time? For the three years. The entire three years. Yeah. Yeah. When I met you, I think you still had like, you were still working somewhere. I don't remember what it was, but you uh, were doing something. I was, what was I doing? I think it was like um, a dealership or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was working at a car dealership. Yeah. I was the photographer for nice. uh, the cars. Mm. So basically, I only worked like two hours a day. Right. I would just pull in every car I could, take like 10, 15 photos of the cars, yeah. pull them back out, go park them, and then I'd be done. Yeah. And then I'd work like two hours a day, and then I'd go home, edit videos, and then plan a trip for the weekend. Nice. Yeah, yeah, those are usually like flights somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Any previous jobs? Um, <laughs> some uh, really good ones, some really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first job was at a chicken fast food restaurant nice. called Chicken Express. Okay. Um, 
I had to get a job because I got a speeding ticket. Okay. <laughs> so my grandparents were making me pay for it. Right. Um, I worked there for a little, for like maybe eight months, nine months. And then I worked at a catfish restaurant where I was washing dishes. Worked there for like two months because the boss was just not cool. Um, then I worked at Walmart for like two and a half years. I was a cashier. Went from there to a car dealership and was a salesman, which is not my not my game. My grandpa was a car salesman and was very good at it. Had his own car, de- has own car like dealership, mm. everything. And I thought like, well, maybe I can just be like him. But no, nah, I was not as good as him at all. And then from there, I worked at AT and T. And then from AT and T, I worked at a marijuana dispensary for like two years. Nice. And then when COVID hit, I got I got fired because I got COVID. <laughs> so oh. they just fired me. <laughs> And then um, from there, I just, like, I wrote unemployment and then just went and filmed every time I could. Nice. And then I got a deal with that big $80 million glass mansion. I was just like, hey, like, please, like, I'll film it for free. Please let me film it. Yeah. And he was like, you know, we've turned down Hollywood offers and stuff, but, you know, I'm going to give you a chance. And I was like... Mm -hmm really <laughs> <laughs> so how did you even luck. hear about this place how did you find this place well the realtor had to post a little video on youtube and put his phone number on mm-hmm. the title nice and i was like i'm just gonna call him right now yeah like this place isn't abandoned but it's vacant it's been vacant for since 2008 right and it's insane it's a glass man the entire thing is glass yeah it's thirty thousand square feet it's on a lake um, it has a 25 car garage, a helicopter pad. 25. Wow. Yeah. All the furniture from the 90s. It has two time capsules under the staircases. Um, it looks like a cruise ship on the inside. Mm. And um, I was lucky enough that they gave me a chance. And when I went out and filmed it, I got like, I think the first couple of weeks, I got over a million views. And that was like my first video that ever took off. Yeah, it's your second largest video right now. It's at six million views. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's yeah, I can see why. Just the thumbnail, man. This place looks crazy. Yeah, yeah it was it was wild, and that place, dude, it's got a helipad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just the from the starting, you can see the H. Yeah, <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah, it's insane. And the owner like just let me come film it, mm-hmm. and you know it's not the best quality of a real estate video, but. Mm-hmm. It, get, it went crazy and the real estate agent got like 70 or 80 calls in the first wow. week wow. well done you know so did they sell the house after or no, no? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it was worth a try though right I yeah mean, i mean you got to think of like where it is yeah. it's in branson missouri yeah. um and it's 80 million dollars mm-hmm. and it's the house is way too personal right it's per, it's way too personalized it's right. green marble i'm looking mm-hmm. at that right now yeah that <laughs> like, is something that's... like if it was white marble or black marble like people would buy that yeah but it's green marble yeah so that's a lot so of it's a hard sell yeah it's very yeah. hard and the tiles have like the logos of the company that the the guy owned and people just aren't going to go for that but i mean location wise it's beautiful yeah it looks really pretty but it's just too much of a personalized house oh that they're gonna wow sell yeah for i see the uh the green marble here hang on i think <laughs> were you monetized by that point uh yes Yes, barely just monetized. And then... Oh, this, right? Is this, hang on, once it loads. And then, oh, yeah, green marble like everywhere. everywhere. Like, all the walls wow. are freaking green marble. Damn. Like, There's something even crazier downstairs. Yeah, and all that furniture is from the 90s. Uh, some of the beds had never even been slept on. Oh, holy crap. There's 11 wow. bedrooms. Dude, it, it kind of almost has, like, a mall feel to it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it kind of feels like you're in a mall or, I, like, Trump Tower or something. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's, a lot of people say it looks like crazy. a cruise ship. It has its own bar. Holy like, that's the bar. Shit. Wow. Yeah. So how long were you inside filming for? The guy only let me in there for two hours. Okay. Mm. Wow. So that's did crazy. you get everything? I got everything. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for you, man. But that video took off, and I think... That was my first big check on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Like, I think all my checks leading up to that were like maybe a thousand bucks. And so I was like stopping to work and stuff. And then ever since that video, it was like full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That made that help you make the decision. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice. I, I kind of remember when that happened too. That was like roughly around like the time when we had kind of first met. Yeah. You were kind of like, oh, I don't even know if I want to do TikTok. I don't know if it's really worth it. And at the time you had gained a little bit of a following because mm-hmm. for some reason, one of your, what was it? One of your TikToks got promoted to like brazil or something like yeah that. yeah <laughs> so you had like a predominantly brazilian uh following that probably most of them didn't even really understand english that well yeah. but they just were intrigued i guess um and i'm like nah bro i'm like because we had all met up and then we met up with my friend brent who had also recently just blown up on tiktok so we were all looking at it like nah dude just just do it, right? Just go out and put as much as you can on every platform and hope something takes off, right? Yeah, so, meeting meeting Brent was a good was a good thing for yeah. for me starting TikTok. Like I mean, I had already started, but mm-hmm. it was like I wasn't really doing it as much right. as I should have. And then whenever Brent was like talking, I was like, Okay, I really got, I really gotta yeah. start doing this more. How's TikTok for you now? Um, it's it's not doing as good as no. as it used to do. Um, I, I don't know why they're like something in the algorithms change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I noticed a lot of people have been complaining about TikTok. I think TikTok is, I think where they made a mistake was they started allowing, uh, videos longer than a minute. I think that's where they started. They have 10 minute videos so now. Right. Annoying. Yeah. I think they've, they've changed their algorithm and they're trying to do this long form content. Cause I think that what they've realized is that the short term, the short term is great to get a lot of clicks really really fast but the problem is is the audience retention on stuff like that is very very Mm -hmm. low so you're on there like when you open up tiktok how long are you on tiktok for what like five minutes tops so you're not really seeing as many ads so i think what they're looking at is they're like well if we can get people to start posting 10 minute long videos doing live streams that'll uh, have people on the platform yeah. for longer than five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to be what YouTube's always been, but YouTube's not going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, YouTube's got its own issues. They got to fix a couple of their own problems as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, YouTube's where it's at because the advertisers understand that people are on YouTube for a lot longer because YouTube generally has everything, right? When you're at home, you can sit there and you can put music on mm-hmm. or you could put. A random video on in the background even if you're not watching it you can still hear it whether it's a podcast or a banks video or ethan's video or whatever it might be right on tiktok you don't have that mm-hmm. it's just on your phone so it's i think that's where tiktok's trying to kind of overlap and it's not really working out so well but they're mm-hmm. killing their own algorithm at the at the same time yeah, yeah like ethan you haven't even done i don't think you do do you do you do tiktok and youtube does, shorts on that yeah, i got a pretty yeah. big tiktok yeah is it yeah. i'm just yeah. looking at your youtube shorts and there's not much yeah no i've only done i think two or three mm-hmm. shorts but yeah. shorts on youtube but yeah. tiktok's doing well TikTok's do, i think actually like recently it's done out of my last like say 10 videos mm-hmm. i bet yeah half of them are over a million views oh like, that's so good yeah good for you. Mm. yeah and how's okay so you're in the states so uh how, how's monetizing on tiktok for you uh i actually don't make anything on TikTok. nothing Okay. Uh, I just I just joined the creator program like maybe a month ago. Got it. Um, How long because, did it take? Because you were doing it for more than two years with success. Yeah. Well, see, they had a creator program when they first came out. Like when they first started the the what is it the where they had like a billion dollars that they were gonna okay spread okay, apart, okay. you know. But um, when I joined that, it seemed like my views were being suppressed. Mm. So, and a lot of people will say that's a myth, but like I'll tell you this. I was at 1.7 million followers and I was only getting 2000 views per video. Yeah. And I'm like, I should at least be getting like a hundred thousand or mm-hmm. more every video. And it's the same thing right now. I'm, I'm only getting like 10 K maybe, yeah. Night, maybe 30 K. Like it doesn't go past that very often. Yeah. And, um, I left that creator program and the first video I posted 2 million views. <laughs> and then like a week later i posted another you. video 57 million views <laughs> yeah yeah big difference yeah That's it was crazy. crazy and i was like okay i'm never joining this again yeah. and then i joined it again because i heard the algorithm changed and they were paying more hmm. and it seems like my views are being suppressed again so i'm probably gonna have to leave it again or just keep trying i don't know yeah it's kind of discouraging because yeah, i absolutely. see some people that make ten thousand dollars a month yeah just posting on tiktok and yeah. i'm like how can I do that? That's like, right. Well, sponsors. You can, yeah. Yeah. If you have a large enough follow, you'll get some sponsors, depending on depending on what it is. Um, yeah. You're not in the creator fund on TikTok, are you? 
uh, temporarily, but it was the same issue. Like I uh, found that as soon as I, I did, you that, were actually able to join. I thought yeah, Canadians weren't able to, a, unless they changed it. There's a mo- you can you can monetize. Yeah. Oh, okay. So and, they must have changed it at some point. And I noticed like the views like uh, trash. It was hard. It wasn't even getting over like five thousand views wow. a video. And then I like left it, and same thing. Like it shot right back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they just didn't want to pay people. Right? Yeah. Unless they're like I don't know certain creators. Maybe they just want to pay them. But yeah, I've been noticing too, even when I talked to Brent about it, he was like, yeah, something's up with the algorithm. Like, it's just, it's weird. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. So some, clearly something's changed on the back end and they're just, they have no interest in um, doing anything else. But um, have you ever had any previous jobs, Ethan? Like uh, jobs maybe when you were younger? I've never had. You never had I've, a job? No, I've never had any way of making money other than when this started mm. yeah yeah well Good i guess we were you. just old enough at this point that you could just do youtube right away yeah right? i was 19 when i started yeah. getting monetized on this mm. yeah that's crazy yeah that's funny yeah when i was a kid i had so many freaking jobs well that's how i met this guy yep. yeah we both worked at a store called canadian tire in the auto parts department <laughs> so and he tra- he was literally he literally trained me my first day there mm-hmm. so that's why i was the one of the best employees next to him obviously <laughs> yeah there was two but, of us that night so you were the second best employee. Uh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> i meant overall <laughs> but yeah i've had like a, a billion jobs growing up um not all that much fun but uh so international travel how many countries you've been to now so far oh uh i think 19 19 i think do you remember them all uh I could probably name them all. Maybe. Well, what was the What was the one that stood out the most to you that you just liked? Maybe for abandoned places that you did. Which one was your favorite? For abandoned places, yeah. um, France. Yeah, France has castles. Oh, oh that's uh, true. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and and some some about France is they leave everything behind. Yeah, <laughs> like they're just that they can't be bothered. So you go in these castles, and it's like artifacts from like the 1500s, like everywhere. That's crazy like it's insane yeah that's so rare to find over here like old old antique type of stuff left behind in places um the only one that i could really think that comes to mind like there's a few but the only one that i could really think that comes to mind was there was that one house that i remember we had spoken about remember the one that i mentioned that the uh, cops chased us through the woods oh yeah (laughs) yeah that was a fun experience but i remember that one had like what stuff from the 1700s or something like that Mm -hmm. That was that was a cool house. I was so disappointed not to be able to do that one. I'm like, really, of all the places, this is the one that the cops had to come with the canine unit and chase us through the woods for. <laughs> yeah, it had it had like millions of dollars worth of antiques crazy. all through it. Like yeah. like there were love letters written from the 1800s. Wow, in there. wow. like dated like 1860. That's wow. crazy. Huh. Yeah, I would, what was the story on that house? There was a lady. She had a lot of cats. Yeah, yeah. So it was built in. <laughs> the house was built in 1775. So okay. it's as old as America. Yeah. Um, and the guy was a woodworker. Mm-hmm. He was a very famous woodworker. And most of that furniture in the house, the man built himself. Yeah. Wow. And when he died, his ashes were actually in the house too when I was there. Mm. Um, but his, I believe it was his wife, um, she, which it wasn't owned by him. I mean, it was owned by him lastly. It, it was passed down from the same family all those years. Right. But lastly it was owned by him and his wife and when he died his wife became kind of a hoarder mm. and um she had apparently a bunch of cats that she wasn't like really cleaning up after mm. and the house actually got condemned Ooh, with damn. all of that stuff in it like the piano the grand piano mm-hmm. all of that all those antiques which i'm talking like millions of yeah, dollars I remember everything antiques. was still there yeah it was crazy yeah. and um yeah, then she actually got put in a nursing home and the house got abandoned mm. ever since. I mean, it was condemned, so they weren't really allowed back in. Right. And I think now, I think everything's cleared out of the house. I think the family actually came and cleared it all out mm. finally. But that was that was like the oldest house in America that like I ever got to explore. Damn. And one of the best. Yeah. I was I was this close. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny experience. Mimo and Garlo, and uh, I think some car randomly pulled up. 
So me and Carla were like hiding, ducking behind like a rock or a tree or something. I don't think they saw us, but then we ran into the back and we're just sitting there for like half an hour. And then all of a sudden Mo's like, fuck, it's the cops. Mm. Like, I can't see that far. What do you see? <laughs> He's like, they have a motorcycle helmet, a big white motorcycle helmet. And we had heard a motorcycle drive up and turn off. Right. And then we're like, oh shit. And then all of a sudden at one point we're like, screw it. Let's just go through this way. And it was one hell of a trek trying to get to like another part. And they ended up catching us anyways, but then we just played stupid because we all decided to uh, change clothes. So we like swapped with each other's clothes. So like I took Mo's shirt, he took mine, what? we swapped half. <laughs> and stuff so we looked all completely different right and uh and then when the cops were questioning us they're like oh did you guys go to that haunted house down there we're like haunted house where can we go and we're just playing stupid at this point and uh they're like oh yeah they saw they saw a bunch of young guys go into the house we're like well we're not young guys obviously we're all old people right i mean well carlo's an old person but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that was a, a pretty funny experience i guess it kind of like made a video on its own mm -hmm. of almost getting getting caught what's your uh, craziest urbex experience to date so far craziest yeah like <laughs> over the top maybe like something just crazy happened um i mean so there was a time in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and have you been in New Orleans? Yes, it's got, pretty sketchy uh, down there. Yeah, my, um, my car got broken into when I was in New Orleans, and yeah. they stole my friend's camera. Yeah, it was <laughs> well, bad. New Orleans is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was in New Orleans, and I don't know if you've ever seen the giant tower that's abandoned mm -hmm. there. It's like forty-five stories. It's like the third tallest building in Louisiana. Okay, and it used to be a hotel, and. I wasn't gonna go in to like film the place. I wanted to go to the roof so I could get photos of New Orleans at night mm. with all the lights and everything, which it's a very hard thing to do because you had to climb 45 flights of stairs. And oh, yeah. in a abandoned building full of dust. <sighs> and obviously lots of homeless people are in there. Like mm. there's lots of uh, trash and dirt and nastiness all in that place. Right. So I had already been, I'd already done this climb before. Uh, during the day in like July. So it was like really hot. But then this time I went, I think it was sometime in October and I went at night cause I was like, okay, New Orleans lit up at night. It's gotta be sick from yeah, up there. Yeah. So that was my first mistake was going at night in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, so when I get in there, I'm setting up my camera in the lobby and next thing you know, there's two homeless people come in. One guy is holding a machete. And, oh no and i'm like oh no here awesome. we go and then um it's like his girlfriend and she like has a bike and they're both screaming at me like are you this dude that's been messing with our stuff and i'm like no dude i'm not even from here and he's like if it's you rolf kill you like yeah. and i was like no dude like i'm just here to take pictures and he was like oh, okay so you're one of those guys <laughs> and i'm like i'm like yeah yeah i'm just trying to go to the roof that's like hilarious. i'm just trying to take some pictures now i'm gonna leave yeah and he was like all right dude well don't come to floor five and he was like holding up the machete and i was like okay you got it bro <laughs> I'm, not come to floor five. Like, I'm just trying to go all the way up like so i thought i was gonna die that night yeah <laughs> shoot you still went up yeah, I still went up. Hell yeah. <laughs> still went up. But the question is, did you go to floor five? I did not. <laughs> I did not go to any floor but the 45th floor. <laughs> but now aren't you just curious? Like, what the hell's on floor five? <laughs> like, what's yeah. going on over there, right? Yeah. They're obviously hiding something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah, it, it gets crazy out there sometimes. I've had a, a few weird instances. Um, there was one time there was like two homeless people living in this school and we went like around back that's where the opening was and uh we noticed that like one of the guys was kind of off to the side hiding like he wouldn't show his face for some reason and we were asking this other guy like if we go in there is your friend gonna like hurt us or something right and he's like he didn't really like say anything he just kind of like paused right um Apparently the way the guy had like a bit of a uh, speech problem because he had been in like a motorcycle accident and had brain damage. Um, so he had a hard time like speaking, but just like when he did that, we're like, nope, okay, we're not going in this building. Not today. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll try it another day. Maybe if mm -hmm. anything, but uh, have you ever ha had any crazy experiences like as of late? That you no, can think um, of? 
Nothing too crazy. I mean, the one time a few years ago we were chased out of a house with a uh, homeless guy on drugs with, oh, a, damn. with a knife, and then one had like a piece of a staircase railing that was like sharp and pointy. Oh, wow. Yikes. They chased us out of a place. That's we had to crazy. jump a fence and go through a small window. It was terrible. Then there was the one time you had the knife that almost stabbed you in the face. Yeah, we were walking through a house and it was like booby trapped and I walked up this the staircase and I guess I stepped on like a, a a cord or a line or something and this like machete came falling from like the ceiling Ugh. down and it was like right here. Ugh. Yeah. Oof. Like that would have ended that would've, badly. Uh, yeah, that would have taken half your face off probably yeah. at that point. Yeah. Damn. You ever had anything like that? <laughs> booby traps? No. No. Oh, thank God. I'm not, yeah. I can't remember if I've encountered any like booby traps. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. Not that I can really recall. I guess I've been fortunate in that. There was another time in New Orleans where <laughs> it's I, always New Orleans, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. New Orleans just it's just it's on its own. You <laughs> never <laughs> learn your lesson. Then you just keep going back. Well, there was another time that I and this this could this was an almost moment. I didn't actually this didn't happen, but it almost happened. So this day that I was going to go, have you heard of like the the naval base, the abandoned naval base there? Mm, no, I don't it's think like, so. It's like a big abandoned navy base. It's okay. like covered in graffiti. It's just like one of those places like right. everybody goes to popular spot yeah. yeah but it's also where a lot of homeless people are mm. and it's also the dumping grounds of a lot of bodies damn <laughs> so um me and my buddy were gonna go there and then we like go park and we're about to get out and then i see like 20 kids would go in there mm. and i'm like nah nah i don't want to get robbed yeah like 20 kids versus me i'm gonna get robbed yeah mm -hmm. um i'm carrying a like a nice backpack obviously i have a camera because i have a tripod mm -hmm. like so i didn't go and then the very next day i had heard on the news that the police were called to that place yikes and they had found a dead girl that had been shot in the face Ooh. and oh then like apparently she was like exploring yeah but her ex-boyfriend had known where she was and went there and shot her in the face oh that's so messed up and a homeless oh, person yeah. found her and she was only like 20 years old yeah. she was very young and then after finding her they went on like a search mm -hmm. they found seven more dead bodies oh oh my gosh so i'm like just thank like, god i didn't like go there all one after the other they were just all at, at the same time there were seven dead bodies in this one building yep. that's crazy wow. yep wow that's nuts it's insane yeah yeah I have yet to find a dead body in these yeah. places, but one day it will happen. <laughs> I can assure you of that. I go to some like really weird places. I go to the forest in the middle of the night by myself, right? So I'm bound to find a dead body at least one time. <laughs> my, my buddy recently found a dead really? body. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. He he like called me like he, before he went to the police station. Yeah. He called me and he was like, "Dude, I just found a dead body." And I'm like, "What are you gonna do?" Because <laughs> like, I don't know. I found him at like 2 a.m. I'm like, so "Dude, crazy. it's like 12 p.m. You need to go to the police." Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. He's like, yeah, imagine. dude, I thought this house was abandoned, but like I walked, like the front door was wide open. The glass was busted. The truck, there was a truck parked there with the yeah. doors wide open, like all overgrown. They got ransacked. Yeah. And but he, the like, person died in the house. He had died like the night before. Oh Yikes. God. And like, I guess this guy was just a hoarder. Yeah. And that's why his house was so messed up. And then my friend was like, dude, like this is a legit dead body. <laughs> oh, man. oh my god yeah that's crazy i mean i think over here the closest would be that one house that had the dead body stain on the ground right? yeah i never did did you ever do that one i didn't do that one but there was another one i did yeah. um where uh after i had already done it and been in it and this was weeks later someone else did it and yeah. they sent me a picture and on the basement floor it's like a wooden parquet floor mm -hmm. and you can see in the in the wood the yeah. shape of a body that was laying on the floor oh my yeah God. yeah yeah and now had that house now they redid it and someone lives in it now damn yeah so basically somebody died on that floor on the basement and then floor probably the body was there for a while left the shape of it or whatever yeah mm -hmm. damn that's crazy yeah that's crazy. That reminds me of the the Lizzie Borden house they had where the uh, you guys are familiar with the Lizzie Borden house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where the um the axe of the I think it was the the husband, he was murdered on the couch and they they stabbed him so many times there was all this blood and it dripped through the uh wooden floors and you can actually see where like if you go into the basement and you look up or you shine your uh like a black light, you'll see where all the blood was stained on the wow. wood. It's wow. crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah. Um, do you guys have belief? Do you have beliefs in the paranormal? I I do. Yeah, I mean, um, you used to go ghost hunting. So I mean, it's it's kind of like 
not very many things have happened, mm -hmm. but there have been some things that have made me like, okay, you know, question it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like there was one time I was just laying in my room. There was yeah. no, no fan on, nothing. And then my hair, like I had longer hair at the time. My hair goes just like, oh wow, yeah, that's weird. And I got really scared. But then, as far as exploring, the only time I've ever had like an like a weird thing happen mm -hmm. was I was at this abandoned mansion in Oklahoma. It was out in the middle of nowhere, like on a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And as I'm like walking, and I'm, I'm in, I'm there at the middle in the middle of the night. So like I'm walking away from the house, and you know how you have like peripheral vision, like you can kind of see, like you're looking this way, but you can see over here too. Yeah. So I was looking straight, but in this like corner of my eye i felt like i could see a tall like i'm talking like eight foot tall dude hmm. like in a black suit like standing there and like i got like really freaked out and like i looked over and it wasn't there and then i'm walking this way and i see it over here now mm -mm. yeah and i was just like freaking out so i just like literally ran <laughs> that's mm -hmm. creepy that was the and that's like one of the only times i've ever had like yeah. a paranormal experience hmm. so i mean that's a uh pretty interesting experience if you ask yeah me. um if you had one place to explore where would it be or what would it be do you have any like specific spots that you really really want to do and you just haven't done yet um yeah i really want to go to china mm. and do all the theme parks oh yeah there's a whole bunch of them over there yeah like i i just want to go on like a theme park like yeah like what do, you, what do you call it like i just want to binge yeah binge. i just want to do a bunch of theme parks because yeah. like also over there it's like so much easier like explore and get away with it mm -hmm. you know so i would love to go to china and do like because they have like 40 abandoned theme parks wow i just want to do like the big ones over yeah, yeah. there if that'd be my kind of like dream spots yeah why are there so many abandoned theme parks over there i think they just have so many failed development things oh yeah i guess there. that makes sense because they yeah. got like those crazy mega cities that they just ended up tearing tearing down completely yeah. at some point those would have been pretty cool to do mm -hmm. just to just even just to see them um what were your top three places so far that you've done top like, three yeah um top three one would definitely be kenny rogers mansion oh for sure that one looks cool um i mean it was just insane the bedroom like was a giant dome Mm -hmm. and like the bed was in the middle of the floor and like when i went the place started power and the toilet seats were those automatic toilet seats which was like so cool i don't know why it's so cool <laughs> oh like when you walk into the bathroom the toilet seat would go Rrr. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that place was awesome uh so that's one of my favorites um what is the theme park called it's called um wonderland eurasia Mm. which is in turkey turkey yeah, it's yeah. the second largest theme park in the whole world uh -huh. and it's completely abandoned yeah and that's definitely probably the best place i've ever done it's just so bizarre mm -hmm. like it's giant buildings full of dinosaurs roller coasters and it's also one of the hardest places I've ever done. It has like nine security guards yeah i was just about to ask you because i remember hearing about that it had like a lot of security then it was kind of hard to get into yeah it had like nine security guards so we spent one entire day just driving around it figuring out where they were all at really wow. and figuring out the one way to get in yeah. and then we were in there for like eight or nine hours and um security never caught us mm. it was crazy damn I guess they're too busy looking on the outside and they're not paying attention to what's on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last place that would be like my, I guess one of my favorites would be the mansion um, in Maryland. Yeah. The big 10 million, $10.5 million mansion with like everything left behind. Like the, uh, the Mercedes Benz in the garage. Mm. That place was just insane. I found it like three years ago and then I didn't think anything of it because I was like, there's no way, you know, I, it looked abandoned when I found it, and I was like, nah, there's no way. Like, this neighborhood's too nice. Mm. And then I seen some random people go to it, and I was like, okay, no. <laughs> Definitely abandoned. <laughs> so then I just went, and I was like, there's no way. Like, the front door was wide open, and everything was left inside. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is so insane. Yeah. Like, a 30,000 square foot mansion with all the stuff in it. Like, yeah. Hermes boxes, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, everything designer you could think of was in the house. Hmm. and like kobe shoes uh gucci shoes like they left a whole collection of shoes Damn. in the house 
Not adding the one from today into the uh, top three yet. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was there. pretty good. It's up there just because yeah. of where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we did. Uh, it, it's kind of becoming the uh, the town circus at this point. Mm, I guess yeah. you can call it. Yeah. Yeah. He just rolled his <laughs> eyes. He just rolled his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought his eyes were gonna roll fo- so far back it was gonna hit his brain for a second there. <laughs> but it's such like it happens all the time. As soon as a few people start going, and then all of a sudden, everyone starts going. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's in a very. Uh, we're not going to say where it is, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun spot. There's like, it's cool, man. Did did you see my video on the vlog channel? No. Like a couple days ago? No. So it's like this $30 million mansion. Um, and how do I describe it? It's big. How many square feet is that one? Like 20,000. 22,000. 22,000. Built in 2005. Five. Yeah. Abandoned. Abandoned. Nine bedrooms, yeah. fifteen bathrooms, <laughs> indoor <laughs> theater, a bar, a ballroom, like every, yeah. everything. Indoor pool. Yeah. We have any idea who owned it? Uh, mm. he. Oh, uh, without giving it away, he, yeah. he had his own business and mm. very good. More money than he knew he, what to do with. Yeah. 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 I really liked the pool area. The pool was really cool. Um, it had like this, I guess it was sort of like a hot tub and then the yeah. water from the hot tub would like yeah. flow into the pool, nice. which was really, really cool. And it was like really deep too for an indoor pool. That it was, was like 10 deep. feet. Yeah. 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 Nice. That was, that would have been, that would have been nice. Um, beautiful backyard, um, kind of a little bit plain if you ask me in the backyard, but, mm-hmm. um, the basement was freaking cool because it had mm-hmm. like this, I don't even know how you describe it. The bar, the mm-hmm. bar. It was like like a leathery material. Like alligator, skin. alligator skin. Is that what it was? Ooh. Skater skin. Yeah. Holy oh, man, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. But damn, that was like that's when you know you got money. <laughs> 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 like how many alligators died to build your bar? Right? <laughs> but oh man, that place was freaking uh, freaking pretty cool. Um, I guess for banks, do you find an encounter more danger in the city? when you're exploring or like kind of out in the the middle of nowhere like when i'm doing like stuff like in in a city yeah um i don't know i'm I'm paranoid equally okay to, to both because yeah. like it when you're not in the city you could be faced with somebody that has a gun mm-hmm. like a like a very angry homeowner or right. whatever when you're in the city you're facing homeless people or you're facing more police presence right and also like when you're in a the city there's more people that can see you mm-hmm. like what, what you're doing yeah. like it's the catch you doing stuff. On you. yeah, yeah. When, versus when you're out in the middle of nowhere which you could probably you know you can get in easier without being seen but it's if somebody shows up it's like what do you do now yeah you know because it's kind of you also kind of stand out too i yes. find if you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah parking mm-hmm. yeah. is terrible for places out yeah. in the middle of nowhere too yeah, yeah. Like city, city's easy for parking. Out in the middle of nowhere is terrible mm-hmm. for parking. So like there's there's pros and cons to both, but I'm just equally as paranoid to both of them. Yeah. When you're out in the country, I'd rather not get shot by some angry farmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I'd rather not get. I'd also rather not get shanked by some homeless guy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah, you got to be very careful from both perspectives because, like, you got to understand certain places have diff- very different laws, right? Like, mm-hmm. in the U.S., they vary from state to state. Some places have uh, stand your ground law um, where they could just shoot if you're on their property altogether, right? Mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to be there or they give you a warning or whatever it might be. But, um, yeah, you got to be very cautious of those types of things like don't go and uh um recklessly trespass in texas for example that's yeah, definitely, not texas. <laughs> definitely not texas yeah there was a there was a crew i think you mentioned that um went and they got shot at right like what what happened again was the story of that oh it was actually that was in new york oh new york sorry yeah, so yeah. it was a uh it was a couple yeah and i don't think they were like really big explorers or anything they were yeah. just kind of saw like an abandoned hotel like hotel that was pretty popular you know, it's pretty easy to see. Yeah. And they went to it, but then there was this house that was close by that looked abandoned, but it really it just wasn't taken care of. It was a hoarder's house. And when they went in, they were exploring, taking pictures and stuff. But the man that lived there was hiding behind a curtain. Mm-hmm. He shot them both Oof. when they walked by. And when they tried to run away, he walked up behind them and executed both of them. Uh. So now he's, you know, in jail for life for that. Rightfully so. And, um, you know that that 
makes me not want to ever do hoarder's houses. And it makes yeah. you also very careful for any house you do because you never know. Some people live in their, you know, in their own filth. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Sounds almost like a, like a Texas chainsaw massacre. Type yeah. of thing. <laughs> like this yeah. dude just, I'm just picturing this dude like hiding behind the curtain. And as soon as they pass, poof, it's like, what the hell? That's scary. Like, that's crazy. About. That's a, yeah, that's really, really crazy. So you gotta be careful doing like this kind of stuff but i think we're all kind of aware of what the risks are like yeah. legally um from doing stuff like this and also the risks of you never know who you're going to encounter right somebody mm -hmm. could be in there they're on drugs and you'd never really know right so um how do you balance preserving the secrecy of lesser known locations this is totally not scripted guys um yeah. lesser known locations with sharing experiences and findings with the urban community to the public i think that's like one of the hardest things to do is like kind of like hide trying to keep locations a secret is like such a challenge like how do you how do you go about it uh it's kind of hard but i mean i'm not even gonna lie like sometimes i make up a story for a house mm -hmm. if i feel like it's too easy to find yeah with the story that it has then i'll have to you'll alter it i'll alter somehow. it yeah i'll alter it in ways where you can't find it mm -hmm. um a lot of times when I go into a house that has everything left behind, I try to go through the whole house first and look for like calendars that have like businesses on them right. and then like flip them over yeah. or letters that have the address on it, flip it over. So otherwise you're sitting there for hours trying to blur everything. Yes. That's just really annoying. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's really hard because you have Google lens, you have tools like mm -hmm. Google lens. Mm -hmm. um, people are really smart. Mm -hmm. People are just really, really smart. Like I, there's a dude that made a blog specifically coming after me and my friend Jeremy and any little thing that we missed out on. Cause like, you know, some it's oh, easy, to, I make, read this. easy Wait, to make a mistake. Yeah. Like any little tiny detail that we yeah. missed on, he found it and like, figured out where the, the place, place was. We did when you were down last, he yeah. made a thing on that, yeah. that, that, that neighborhood in the court. Yeah. He did a thing on that that I read and yeah, that was something. Yeah. It was, so it's like something that you would accidentally leave in the video. Yeah. Accidentally. Then, like very little thing. Yeah. And he would pick up on it and publicly mention that, oh, this is in fact where it is. And he would say, he would say his story's bogus. Mm -hmm. This yeah. and this. Here's where it is. And I'm like, I, I want to tell the guy, like, you, you realize what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like your average person isn't going to see what you saw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. And your average vandal isn't going to see what you saw. Like you're seeing the very tiny little things and you're enhancing the photo. Mm -hmm. Like you're doing so much to figure out where this is. And um, props to you for doing that, you know, for one. If you're going to mm -hmm. do that, if you want to find a location like that, props to you, whatever. The guy maybe should be working for the like police and actually be doing something productive. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. If you're that <laughs> damn good at finding these little minute clues, then maybe you should be like a invest like yeah. a detective or something <laughs> but <laughs> a I'm private like, investigator yeah. i'm like what like do you do you realize what you're doing yeah. like it, i i make a i alter these stories so the places don't get destroyed right so they don't get destroyed by vandals so things don't get stolen out of them like that's why i alter the stories and people get mad at me for making up stories whatever i don't care mm -hmm. like i'm at the end of the day i'm protecting a location that's what it's, that's what it's about you know we find the places and we want to keep them exactly how they are mm -hmm. just like the like the mansion today like kind of a lot of people figured out where it was really fast and then now there's some graffiti in it that mm -hmm. fast man within like, like really what, fast. a week and a half yeah roughly. Oh, wow. thankfully it wasn't crazy right. it was just like one little thing yeah but you know it, they can go like that mm -hmm. so like i don't know i just try my best to keep it and, and i have like my group of people that like i i can share with and like yeah know it's okay I don't really like to meet up with a lot of new people anymore because I've also been screwed over like really badly with that too. And um, it's gotten me into situations that I just don't want to be in that I don't want to deal with. Cause yeah. a lot of people will take this stuff way too seriously too. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's like their life depends on like getting a place locked up before I get there type yeah. stuff. Like people mm -hmm. are crazy with this stuff. Yeah, like so. certain people with names that write, rhyme with bike and flalon. <laughs> 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 Just saying a few. Uh, <laughs> if you get it, you get it. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, people are nuts. I remember there was one guy a while ago. He went and like locked up some house that he pretended like 
he owned it or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, like he yeah. literally went, put his own fake camera, yeah. put his own log, and then filmed himself after doing the, it. The bread, the bed and breakfast. The, right, up, right. Yeah, that was unreal. That was just hilarious, and people were like literally laughing at this guy. Like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> he put his own lock on the front yeah. door. He had a camera set up, and it's yeah. like, what are you doing, buddy? It's so funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Some people, some people seriously take things way too too yeah. seriously. Yeah. Listen to this. This uh, this one guy and. He, he li- I'm not going to say who he is, cause, but he lives in Florida. Mm-hmm. He got word somehow that I was going to be in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. And there's this big mansion there. Like, I'm talking like 40 pillars, mm-hmm. like huge mansion, Greek revival. Mm-hmm. And everything left inside. Wedding dress still like propped up. On, wow. On thing. Like, everything left and the beds were still made, all that stuff. Crazy mansion. And he got word that I was going to be there. And so what he did was he drove all the way from Florida to Birmingham, explored the house. How long is that drive? Um, I don't know. It was probably like eight hours. Oh, yikes! From where he was, um, drove probably all more. that way. Isn't it more? It might I be more. Swear it's more because Alabama's. Uh... Well, Alabama's connected to Florida, but the oh yeah, top, yeah. but Birmingham's yeah, yeah, like yeah, right. up yeah. towards the top. Yeah, it's up towards the top. Um, and he he's like towards the bottom of Florida, so it's a pretty long drive. So it is more than yeah. if you're down like Miami. The Miami to get to the top is about six hours. So going west from there is probably another six hours. So probably twelve hours. Yeah. So give but, or take, just to get to this. So but anyway, he drove all he drove all that way. <laughs> yeah. To go explore it before I got there. Yeah. And um, my friend Jeremy had opened up some doors for me. He was like, "Okay, here's some doors I opened up. You can get in. Come film it." I was like, okay, I'll be there like tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He gets up there before I get there. He films the whole play or he takes pictures of the whole place, whatever. And then he goes and tells the owner, hey, people are going in your house. Better lock it up. So he locked, so the owner locked it up. And then when the, when he got home, he posted his whole blog because he does blogs, posted his whole blog at the place, mentioned the address, oh. everything where it was. And got the place shut down before I got there, just so I couldn't go to it. Damn. Wow. And then he did the exact same thing with a funeral home recently. So this funeral home was like a holy grail funeral home. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he went in and he drug the uh, embalming table into a room and locked it in the room, like locked the door behind it so nobody else could take the same photo as him because mm-hmm. he got word that I knew where it was. So, Yeah. That's uh, so weird. But but one of my friends, I'm not gonna <laughs> what say, is going on? Yeah, it's just so crazy. Yeah. But one of my friends, I'm not gonna say who, went in and actually busted open that door and pulled yeah. it back out and set the whole thing back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Some See, people just have like an unhealthy obsession. It's true. You yeah, know? It's, it's, way, it's 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 way too serious. Like people yeah. take it way too serious. Yeah, it's like, dude, it's not like a competition or anything. Like you're just going to abandon places exactly. just yeah. for I don't know one reason or another, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't really under understand this, this whole weird jealousy thing and competitiveness over all these. Like I understand trying to keep places like secure so they don't get destroyed every two seconds, yeah. right? Um, like I, I can already imagine what's going to happen with this new one because there's oh, it's already- the foyer has that big pile of rocks when people get their hands on oh, rocks bad I didn't things think happen of that. right oh, so that's yeah. that's easy that's way too easy there's going to be no windows oh, soon gonna on that mess. it's going to be a disaster yeah so trust me they give it about a week we can well when you've got point. you got people on there i'm yeah. not going to name names but there was a post uh, a day or two ago mm-hmm. and someone made a, a post of that house right. and they dropped who, who lives next door in the yeah. description of the post mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're just asking for problems yeah. you know yeah, oh, I don't know. That's why it's like at this point, it's like who even cares anymore? Like, cause the, it, you, people just keep name dropping things, anyways. Like right? city dropping, yeah, mystery, like whatever, right? Yeah. It's so just... and then people go and they take the rocks and they smashy smashy. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of rocks in there too. <laughs> yeah. There was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say for like noobs, like people just starting out urban exploring? There's a lot of people that are like really, really. <laughs> finally getting started would you would you say uh do it what precautions would you tell them to take or um what would you tell them to do um (laughs) 
have fun. Noobs. <laughs> noobs. Yeah, noobs. They're new people, right? They're noobs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have nothing against noobs. Yeah. Um, we were noobs once. Yeah, right? we were all we noobs. We all started somewhere. <laughs> um, it's just like, I don't know. Because I have some noobs that are like constantly on my back. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we give me this, we give me this, we give me this, we give me this. And it's just like so annoying, you know? Yeah. yeah. So what, what I, I guess my advice for noobs is just like, like, just do it. Like, yeah just, like if you want to do it like just do it mm -hmm. but like learn from everybody else yeah like don't don't do it the wrong way because like i have some like some noobs that will come talk to me and i'll tell them advice and they will not listen mm -hmm. like i was like okay here's what you do don't ever park at a place mm -hmm. was the first thing to do they go live on instagram and i go on there and they're parked at the place <laughs> <laughs> i'm like dude and then like i I find this one house that this one guy did and he was, he was a noob when he did it. I mean, he's still a noob, but like, <laughs> and he, I was like, okay, how'd you get in? And he was like, well, the back door was open. I was like, okay, where'd you park? He was mm -hmm. like, oh, I just parked, parked in the driveway. I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so guess That's what? When I went guy. there, <laughs> back door was locked. Yeah, <laughs> so, of course. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're just asking yourself to get in trouble yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you're ruining it for other people. Yeah, so yeah. like, just learn from other people like mm -hmm. when people tell you something that have been doing this for a while like listen to them yeah like they know what they're talking about yeah, and yeah. i'm never going to steer anybody wrong like i don't care mm -hmm. like i'm not going to lie to somebody like if somebody knows where like because this happens a lot people will find a location they'd be like how do you do this i'm not going to lie to them and say like oh it's locked up it's got cameras like i'm like if you found it you found it like go to it whatever mm -hmm. yeah. like like but i feel like people think that i'm lying to them all the time because it happens so much in this like community in this hobby but like if you come to a big guy and you like know that they're legit and then like me like if anybody comes to me i'm not gonna lie to you like if i tell you don't do this i would recommend you don't do that yeah so just learn like ask questions learn from other explorers mm -hmm. and don't just don't do stupid stuff <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's what it is it's like i feel like some people are just illogical sometimes yeah they, they just can't figure out like common sense things like don't yeah. run in the dark in an abandoned abandoned building it's probably not a good idea <laughs> yeah right there may be a hole somewhere and you're gonna go <laughs> down a few levels yeah um what about youtube what would you recommend for like somebody who wants to start a youtube channel um whether it's urbex or not um uh, if you want to start i mean i i don't think there's ever a bad time to start a youtube channel mm -hmm. um i mean YouTube is getting kind of saturated with some things, but at the same time, like if you want to start YouTube, you have to understand that it's, it's not, it's a marathon. It's not a race. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, it takes time. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of effort and you're not going to get there in a day unless you're just, unless you get lucky. Right. You know what I mean? So like Ethan's put in years of this. I've put in years of this. You put in years of this. Like, you, you know, we put in a lot of time to get where we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we've earned the plaques. Yeah. You know, it doesn't come within a day. So if you're going to start a YouTube channel, be consistent, stick with it. Even if times get hard, if you feel like you're failing, don't stop. Mm -hmm. Cause I've had, I'm sure you've had those times where you feel like it's not going to work out, oh, yeah. right. but you just keep going. And then eventually it works out. You don't do it. You don't do it for the money. You do it mm -hmm. for the fun. Yeah. And when you do mm -hmm. something that you love, the money is just going to come with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a good perspective. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people these days are they're struggling to kind of like start off, um, even if they get like a little bit of a ledge up by like you know a little bit of shout outs here and there from larger creators, whatever it might be. Um, but I feel like they get deterred because, um, you know, they're not getting the views and they're spending all this time and money and it's like, I totally get it, dude. But most of us didn't take off within the first year, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the people that I know that are successful actually had very, very difficult times within the first year, right? Mm -hmm. Like you were doing something completely different. I was doing something completely different, um, Ethan, like, what was your first year like? Like, you were probably it was like slow was, and gradual. I, I got right? excited when I'd get like 500 views. Right. I'd get so hyped. Yeah. Like, 
Like you know, hundred views. What the yeah, hell? No, oh my literally. god! Did you see the mom? Mm-hmm. Look, mm-hmm. Yeah, look, hundred views. <laughs> yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah. So I I hate to see when people get deterred and they're like just really disappointed because like their first year was so bad or even the second year, whatever it might be. Um, but sometimes success takes a little bit longer and it'll be worth it in the in the long run. Um, I think pretty much almost just about everybody. Um, who's kind of like in our position or even better or like doing better than even we are right now um, kind of went through the same struggle. Like I know Mo, for example, did daily vlogs every single day for two years straight. Mm. We're talking about Mo Sarji and he got nowhere with it. And then he finally changed and started doing the adventure and the abandoned and stuff like that. And then things kind of caught on. But for the first couple of years, he literally had got nothing out of it, mm. right? And most of those, like, people don't even know the channel exists with all of those vlogs. They have barely any views, right? I think uh, Omar Gosh was the same. Um, I think Josh and Steve were the same. They started off, they were B-boys together, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. right? They were, like, break dancing and yeah, they, they had like yeah. a thousand subs for like a long period of time and it just didn't they weren't getting anywhere and then all of a sudden something just clicked and it took off right mm-hmm. so i i think pretty much everybody even aldo recently like because i knew aldo back in the day aldo's world tv had tons of viral videos like tens of millions of views back in the day and he's still doing great and he's you know he's got a good career um but he recently told me he's like yeah man when i started I was stuck at 2,000 subscribers for the longest time. Then all of a sudden, bang, one viral video. But he never stopped, right? He kept producing content. Eventually, one caught on. You get your first 100,000, 200,000 views. And then here he is now, right? Mm-hmm. Millions upon millions of views later. So mm-hmm. that's kind of my perspective on it. Just, you got to put the, the work into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um so what like motivated you to start YouTube? Was it just because you just were having fun doing? It? I think that's kind of what you said, right? Like you yeah. were just kind of enjoying the experience, learning, and yeah. Well, I watched a lot of Vine before, mm-hmm. like when Vine was out, and I wanted to be a YouTuber because I wanted to make Vines too. I tried making Vines, right? And um, I wanted to go on to bigger, like longer videos because I just wanted to do something on YouTube. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make videos when I was a kid. And but I never got the resources because my grandparents were very strict and wouldn't let me do it. So I just kind of gave up on it for a while. And then I I think it was I was probably twenty when I started again. And I was like, okay. I remembered my dream. I wanted to be a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do this. So I'm just gonna start filming on my phone. I just started filming stupid videos. And then I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do because like you know, you do you start off with these different things and you figure out you don't really like doing mm-hmm. that. And I was like, I don't really like doing this. Like I feel like I'm faking who I am on the camera. I didn't like it. So then I started doing like the abandon and I was like getting raw reactions. And I was like, okay, so this is like actually this feels good. Like, mm-hmm. I can actually do this. And then it just got fun. Like I had fun like messing with editing, messing with cameras trying to do photography too on top of that like it just became like really fun learning how to do it and then watching other people do it and it just kind of took off to where it was and uh you know i'm sure the same thing kind of happens with with you guys mm-hmm. and you know i just you grow to like really really love it yeah um but then again like there has been times where i've experienced like burnout because i'm trying too hard yeah and kind of going back to like your last like question about people starting youtube i feel like people start and try to do too much too fast Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like i see people with 100 subscribers try to make merch right and try to like just get it out there like right then and there like you know you might get a couple people buy it but like you're you're trying really hard to do something too fast you're trying to like be a huge person when you're when you haven't even yeah. taken baby steps yet and i feel like they get a little bit disappointed yeah it gets discouraging the only people that bought much. the merge was themselves and their mom right yeah so, yeah like you're doing too much yeah. too fast and you're going to get discouraged and mm-hmm. you're going to want to quit faster mm-hmm. so yeah don't get discouraged out there rome was not built in a day exactly. neither was Ooh. neither was microsoft so um <laughs> but microsoft apparently was built in a garage so build things in your garage and have fun <laughs> amazon was too right uh i 
think so. Think yeah. Garage, Something sure, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. But speaking of garages, you're uh, becoming quite the car collector these <laughs> days. What do you have so far? Uh, I have a 2020 Dodge Durango GT. Yeah. I have a 2011 Dodge Charger Mopar edition. Ooh, so, nice. they, so they only made 1,500 of them. And I have number 1204. That's the Charger you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2011. And then I just recently bought a 2021 Dodge Charger Scat Pack. Nice. Um, and I, f I love that car. <laughs> that was the one you, ju you just did the exhaust on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, that sounded freaking nasty. Sounds so good. Yeah. <laughs> My uncle had the uh, Mopar Challenger when they did it for like a limited period yeah. of time or whatever. Um, yeah. Any other cars in the future that you're going to pick up? Uh, I definitely want to eventually get a Hellcat. Nice. Um, you're just a Dodge guy. Eh? I really like Dodge. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> um, as far as like a more like sporty, sporty yeah, yeah, car, yeah. like a coupe, mm -hmm. um, I. I've really, really liked the new C8s, okay. the Corvettes. Oh, those are fun. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. don't know if I can fit in any kind of coupe. <laughs> <laughs> I think the C8, I think you could. Yeah. Because yeah. Mo has a C8. A, you do? Yeah. And yeah. I'm 6'4". What are you? 6'7". <laughs> oh, okay. You got a few inches on me. But <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, adjusting the cameras tonight was a bit of a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get the, the angles proper. But I would love so a satin so. red. Like, Ooh. um a c8 yeah that would be fun what about you ethan so you is it did you already like make it uh public I've, you're getting? I've said it on my story but i can say it again yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the next few weeks i'll be getting an audi rs6 yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. 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 congratulations done thank deal you. Thank very you. good thank you that's uh that would be a fun car so are you gonna build a big collection too like your hot wheels i'd love to that'd be a dream <laughs> that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've always kind of thought about that. I'm like, I don't even care about like the size of the house that I lived in. As long as like a decent size for me and my family, but just like a really big garage. 25 car yeah. garage. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 25 car, exactly, right? Yeah. We need 25 car garage. Um, but yeah, so you got the C8. Any other ones that you want to get? Um, I've always, I've kind of wanted a, a, I want a Lamborghini Urus one day. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's an SUV, it, yeah. you know. I have tried to sit in a Lamborghini before and they're kind of, Tiny. They're tight. Yeah. 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 But a Lamborghini Urus, I could definitely fit in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What about uh, future plans? You guys got anything Got anything cool coming up? Um, I'm going to Jersey okay. um, right after this trip. Yeah. And then I'm going to Florida right after that. Ooh, lucky you. Um, to film a house that's for sale. It's a $5 million house. Nice. And then I'm trying to plan to go to Spain sometime. Mm -hmm. And then this summer, I want to take... Uh, my girlfriend and my stepson on, on a cruise. Nice. Which would be cool because they've never been out of the country. Yeah, yeah. Where would you cruise to? Where's your probably place? Jamaica, nice. Cayman Islands, Caribbean. Bahamas. Yeah. yeah, somewhere like that. I don't want to take them to like anywhere too too crazy, crazy yet. Yeah. Um, but then me and my girlfriend are actually planning on going to Italy. Nice. Uh, in the summer sometime. Yeah, but some nice uh, spicy meatballs and some cannolis. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I gotta, I gotta get them their passports. Yeah. So that's yeah. the first. That's step. a process. Yeah. What about uh, you, Ethan? Any plans? Uh, probably going to be doing a U.S. trip in the spring. Yeah? Yeah. Where are you heading? Uh, Jersey, New York. There's some interesting places this guy's down that I'd love nice. to check out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a few of them, too. There's some There's some, some doozies out there. Yeah. Um, definitely some good ones. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What about for, like, YouTube? Are you guys, like, planning on ever doing different type of content, or are you just sticking to the same thing that you're going to be, that you're doing right now? Well, actually, that's that's what I'm doing, like, with the houses for sale. I'm trying to do, like, I still, I'm still going to do abandoned, but I want to do more, mm -hmm. but also involving, like, real estate, like, nice. Airbnbs, like, crazy Airbnbs, or houses for sale, like, mm. million dollar houses, multi million dollar houses for yeah. sale. Just get, being able to walk through very luxurious homes is, mm -hmm. like, cool anyways, like, with the abandoned stuff, mm -hmm. but, you know... Being able to like optimize and get a different crowd of people in there too mm -hmm. it is, I think, going to be really good for my channel altogether. Yeah. So with the Airbnbs, like I'm getting a cool place to stay. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a video out of it, and you know, even if the Airbnb is really expensive, if the videos do well, then it kind of just pays, pays me back, it, yeah. and then it lets me be able to do it more and more often and get to have opportunities to see cooler places around right. the world, like the entire world. Mm -hmm. you know so 
that's kind of like my ideal right now. I'm trying to go for Airbnbs and houses for sale, but mm -hmm. also do a band at the same time. Yeah. How how frequently do you upload? It's like once a week? Uh, I try to do once a week. Once yeah. a week? Is that going to change ever in the future or just going to stick to that? Probably going to stick to that yeah. for a while. It seems to work for you anyway. So yeah, it, whatever it, works, don't change it. If I ever get to a point where I have like a lot of videos saved up, right. like, but I don't, I, it's very hard for me to keep a lot right. of videos saved up. Do you ever film anything and then just like, like how many of the videos would you say that you film that you actually end up putting out? Is it like all of them or is it like some go in the garbage and you just never end up uploading? Um, out of all of my years doing this, yeah. I've probably trashed like three videos. Oh, that's not that many. Yeah, yeah. I try to, I try to do my best on everything. Right. Um, so I, I try, I try to make the most out. like, like I said, every trip I try to make the most out of. Yeah. Cause like I'm home, but I'm also a homebody. I like to travel, but I'm also a homebody. Yeah. Like I like my bed. Yeah. So yeah, we were like, talking about that earlier. You're like, yeah, and I could do like two weeks tops and then I just want to go back home and sleep <laughs> in my own bed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a big guy and like, it's yeah. hard to find stuff well, that's yeah. like, it's yeah. comfortable for me. That's true. And like, I'm like, I miss my family and my mm -hmm. dog, you know, and just the comfort of my own home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What about you, Ethan? Have you ever like scrapped videos before? There's like a been lot? a couple for different reasons. Yeah. One was because the people I was with, the background of what they were saying wouldn't was, was not appropriate. Oh, okay. And then some that just <laughs> were either too dark or just weren't uh, long enough or up to my standard. And I just right. like, ah, uh, just get rid of it. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I've had, I've had a couple over the years that have just been kind of, ah, eh, this is too boring. There's yeah. nothing really like exciting about this one. But it's, but yeah, it's been like pretty, not too many videos. There have been some that I like, even just vlog things that I had ideas for, and I just recorded things at home or whatever. And I'm just like, eh, I don't feel like editing it. Mm -hmm. This video is gonna end up being boring. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have backlogs? Like good backlogs? No, no, I've got, like, not right now. They usually on average like three to six three yeah. six like tops yeah yeah that's yeah. about what i have like on occasion yeah, yeah, yeah but like steve i was talking to him he says he has enough videos for two years oh uh, yeah and i'm like dude yeah. that, what a dream wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be because he uploads once a week so he's probably got is it once a week still or is it i think he does once a week yeah that, that'd be a hundred and hundred and four videos, videos at least yeah, yeah roughly that's insane so. Yeah, there's been like some videos that literally videos that he filmed with me that he just uploaded. Wow. Right, we did the Titanic Mansion. Oh, the island over home. two years ago. That was before we even met up with you, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went and filmed this video, and then last week uh, I get the notification that oh, exploring the uh, abandoned Titanic owner's mansion, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, is that the same one? Because there's like a couple different ones that. You guys have done over the years, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's all kind of been titled like Titanic Mansion or Titanic Owners, somehow connected to it. And I'm like, and then I literally messaged him. I'm like, about fucking time you upload this video. <laughs> like, what are you waiting for? And he messaged me back. He's like, yeah, I know. He's like, I might as well just do it now. But yeah, as far as I go, like sometimes I have backlogs, but um, if I go on like a like a really good road trip, I'll do like. I don't know. I'll film like three, four videos in like three, four days, like mm -hmm. steady. But also keep in mind, and my they'll videos, be posted within three or four days. Uh, Usually. Well, about a week. Yeah. yeah, give or take about a week. Um, because I post every like main channel videos every two days, and then yeah. same thing with the vlog channels. You so. guys notice how often he posts? It's like ridiculous. Yeah. How often you? <laughs> it's post, kind man, of yeah. sickening, but people yeah. like it. Yeah, so hell yeah. It. But like, so. how how does one get? a 104 video backlog while uploading every week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because steve just does nothing but film abandoned places oh, wait, he also does have an editor so he does all that's he has to true. really do is focus on filming. that's true mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i guess i guess we just need editors that's <laughs> well i mean there was a, there was one does he have an editor now because at one point his editor ended up getting a new job so i know that i think he has a new editor yeah. new one yeah, yeah but yeah i know his thing is um basically filming and playing video games that's like steve's thing and sleeping yeah, he, he can sleep have you noticed like when you when you're on like a trip with steve and he's always sleeping we're like, we're like all right he'll be like how, how far to the next spot and we're like oh yeah we're like 10 minutes away he's like all right <laughs> in the back. Dude, like in, instantaneously it's the funniest thing ever and i'm just like how do you sleep this much like we'll go on like a a, a road we'll drive somewhere for like eight hours 
out of the eight hours, he's asleep for seven, and then we'll get there, film, and then we go to like the Airbnb just after, and he'll sleep for another ten hours straight. Nice. Like I don't know how do you? Do? I don't understand. <laughs> oh my god, he's hilarious though. But yeah, I Love think he's, he's he's in, still in China, right? He's somewhere over there in Asia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems actually a really good guy. If, if oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like he's he, uh, I don't know if I ever told you or if you've ever heard about the time I dislocated my knee. Mm. I, Ooh, I, I think I remember what happened. So there's this house in Massachusetts and. The only way in was through a window, and the mm -hmm. window's about six foot off the off the ground. Damn it! So you had to get onto the porch and yeah. like kind of wiggle your way over to the window, get your foot in, and then kind of you know maneuver in. Mm -hmm. So when we were leaving, I had put my leg out, you know, my long leg, mm -hmm. put my leg onto the uh, the porch, and then was trying to maneuver my body to get out and pull my other long leg out. Which then had my body at a weird angle, and then my knee just buckled yeah, yeah. and dislocated, and my whole leg oh. kind of bent up to oh. my side, oh. and I oh. fell out the window Ow. onto a bunch of broken glass, cut my hands up, and my knee, I looked like a broken action figure. <laughs> like oh. My leg was off to the side, and I was like just screaming in pain, and Steve and my other friend are still in the house. Damn. And I'm just like outside just screaming, like it, yeah. it hurts so bad. And Steve comes out, and he it's the weather. It's like 13 degrees outside Fahrenheit. It's like really cold. Mm -hmm. And he um, sees my hands are all bloody. He literally takes his shirt off for me to get my like. What a good friend! Like, well, like what a good guy! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he helped me like. Damn. Well, I actually popped my knee back into place myself Yo. right then and there because the neighbors were calling the cops. So you have like, to go. Gotta go. Yeah, we had to get out of there. And so the, Steve helped me hobble to his car. Got, got me in the car. Then Steve took me all the way to a hospital and like stayed with me the whole time and then took me to the airport. Mm. Like, what a great guy. Wow. wow. I even got blood all over his car. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you guys were sitting there waiting at the hospital, how much did he sleep? <laughs> uh, he actually didn't. I think no. he was like, I think he was like really concerned. Yeah, yeah. Like, all the, I couldn't the walk. adrenaline and everything Damn. that's happening. That's crazy though. Holy yeah. Moly. And also didn't have insurance at the time. Mm. So I couldn't even really do anything. They yeah. just had to wrap my knee and I had to fly home. Yeah. Like that. But your knee's been fine ever since? Yeah. 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 It was just that one. I just freak slightly thing. tore some ligaments. That's it. Oh. And they just healed on their own? Mm -hmm. hmm. Cool. Amazing. Luckily. <laughs> yeah, holy God. damn! I've never torn any ligaments, but like, I usually, yeah, no, it's definitely not <laughs> from what I hear. Like ACL, MCL, that shit's bad. Mm -hmm. and I'm glad it wasn't worse than just some torn ligaments. Oh like. yeah, yeah. So, have you ever gotten seriously injured when you were exploring something that you can recall? I don't think so. No, no, I've been lucky. lucky. Yeah. yeah, lucky dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a couple nails in the feet here and there. I've cut <laughs> mm -hmm. my hand here and there. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when you cut your hand because it's like random broken glass and you don't even realize it. And then like ten minutes later, you're just walking around. There's just blood dripping off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, like, I did. I did fall off the roof once actually. No, oh. I was climbing like a like a yeah, like a trellis. Yeah. To get up to like a get to go through a window was the only way in the house. It was like yeah. a second story window. Yeah. And the trellis was made of like fifty year old brick, and I was like halfway up, and the thing just crumbled, mm. and I fell straight back into the garden. Yeah, like a solid like eight feet. That was not <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah. But you fell, at least you fell into the garden, so it's a little bit of a soft landing, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my god! But uh, yeah, I guess that's. Uh, pretty much it did we have anything else that you wanted to did i miss anything i think uh i was going to that was from something else i, I didn't even mean to leave that there no, that was, <laughs> yeah. extreme travel extreme <laughs> travel <laughs> yeah i've been talking about extreme travel a lot lately because we just had uh christmas list uh on the show a little while ago and that's kind of like what he does it goes to these like crazy dangerous places and i've been thinking about it for a long time i'm like i'd really like to actually do something like that like just kind of go somewhere document like a village or town or whatever go to the hood or something document it sounds like you do it all the time in new orleans right you should maybe you should like film that stuff once never going back to new orleans <laughs> no? is it, the experience was that bad right it's just like i've never had a really good experience in yeah. new orleans ever 
Like every time I go, there's something wrong. Happens, yeah. So I mean, it was the same thing for me. It's so unfortunate because it's such a like it's a beautiful city, mm -hmm. right? I mean, for the most part, it needs a little bit of work. Well, one or two streets are beautiful. Right. Is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm talking about like the old like the French Quarter and yeah. stuff like that. Like yeah. that area is really nice. Um, was kind of you know not. Uh, taken away by the hurricanes and stuff right mm -hmm. but apart from that like yeah we were there for two nights i think and by the second night the car had been broken into and my friend's camera had been stolen and yeah that just kind of made our trip uh not so much fun not when my friend uh lomar had to sit there in the passenger seat and because we had a garbage bag like around the window and all he's <laughs> for like oh. 12 hours all the way oh. to uh texas that's awful yeah that was not a fun fun thing but yeah thanks for coming out guys thank yeah, you thanks for having me yeah hope it was nice you, meeting you hope you enjoy the rest of your uh trip here yeah. in uh, canada try and stay warm because it's cold out there <laughs> it's so cold <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's only going to get colder from here yeah, trust me this is nothing this is like the beginning of the this end this is nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice it's like, it's well, like know, it's, spring it's, it's not as bad as iceland <laughs> no have you been oh, yeah. yeah you went like a few years ago yeah oh, i actually well was it uh 2022 i went to iceland mm. and um it makes this look warm yeah oh yeah for <laughs> it's sure really cold there yeah. and windy so yeah. like so when you get car insurance there um you have to pay a lot for oh, car insurance there uh they also tell you uh to always hold on to your door with both hands when you open the door because the wind will right. literally rip the door off wow. wow and they're not lying like yeah, it's strong because iceland's like kind of closer to the arctic mm -hmm. right yeah yeah. So I remember my grandmother went there a few years ago and it was like a trip with like all these old ladies and they went to the most northern part of Norway, which is basically the Arctic Circle at that point. And she was saying, yeah, we all had to link our arms. Otherwise, the wind was so strong that they were going to blow us over or you're just going to see a little old lady like <laughs> blow away. <Yeah. laughs> Imagine seeing that just ah, <laughs> just blowing away but yeah it's it's crazy up there but yeah alberta's like gets even ridiculously cold out there and then i'm tempted to go to none of it one day yeah we'll see we'll see what's next but apart from that <laughs> thanks for coming and uh hanging out and uh talking a little bit telling us about what you do and your experiences and all that stuff um everybody at home go and obviously check these guys out subscribe if you haven't done already of course smash the like button subscribe here as well turn those notifications on and we will see you guys in the next episode love you bye-bye bye-bye